Let us consider the Green Paradox next. The Green Paradox, as expressed by Sin, puts forth the idea that announcing ever-increasing stringent climate policy in the future, such as a carbon tax that would automatically increase, increase over time, can have the paradoxical result that it incentivizes producers of fossil fuel to shift their production to the present and may thereby worsen climate change. Cairns provide another useful illustration. Let us return to the earlier found hotelings rule and now consider introducing a tax scheme. Let the tax tau t be such that the net price received by the firm is reduced through time at a rate delta. The earlier found arbitrage condition is only slightly modified, with the only difference that the returns of extraction at time t or t plus 1 are now expressed after taxes. After el elimination of terms, the arbitrage condition can be expressed into a modified rule. Focusing on the new additional term, we can see that the carbon tax that remains constant over time, or put differently with the delta zero, the tax does not influence the decision whether to produce today or tomorrow as we are left with the same hotelings rule as earlier. With an increasing tax over time, that is with a positive delta, the results here suggest that the price of resources will increase faster over time, or in different words, that optimal extraction follows a steeper path of extraction by moving more extraction to the present. The paradox makes some intuitive sense, as expressed briefly by Cairns on page 79 and 80, the economics behind the result that the rising tax changes the relative gains to the producer over the life of the reserve, making present extraction comparatively more attractive at the margin. Yet Cairns spends the remainder of his paper arguing why we are unlikely to see such a green paradox, arguing the key assumption usually glossed over is that output can be rearranged as desired. In reality, the potential to reduce is, op is obtained by high upfront cost in drilling wells that determines an output capacity. Once capacity is installed, it is usually not changed for a signif significant period of time. Cairns continues on page 82. There is no reason to believe in a green paradox if one bases the analysis on current abilities to increase supplies in response to a change in the time profile of net prices resulting from a tax. If anything, the tax may be expressed to result in a reduction in production and a reduction in emissions of greenhouse gases since the tax may render some producing properties no longer profitable. More generally, support for Hotelings rule has been weak. As expressed in Kraut Kramer's review, there is strong empirical evidence that the basic Hotelling model of finite availability of non-renewable resources does not adequately explain the observed behavior of non-renewable resource prices and in situ values. This is not terribly surprising given the many other features of non-renewable resource supply, such as exploration for and discovery of new deposits, technological change and capital investment that alter the implications of finite ability, finite availability. While Hotelings rule did not prove to be an empirical regularity for most non-renewable resources, insights from his analysis may still be valuable to some. Coming back to our initial example of phosphate rock, with some goodwill, these prices show an increasing trend. Let us watch two clips on phosphorus. First, three minutes by Minute Earth, followed by two minutes from Best Job Ever. <laughs> 